you probably have some idea that whatever SD card reader you use is going to make a difference. But just how much of a difference? PEC World has a recent article titled Why Your Laptop's SD Card Reader Might Be Terrible. And they tested four different recent model laptops and found big differences in the performance. So I wanted to put the gear that I have to the test. Now, I don't have a PC, but I do have a MacBook Pro with a built-in card reader. And even though it's getting some years on it, it remains pretty popular with creators because Apple notoriously deleted the SD card slot from its laptop lineup. I have a few SD card readers that I've accumulated over the years, and let's see how they compare to the built-in SD card slot on the MacBook Pro. So this old MacBook Pro does have 16 gigabytes of RAM, plus the hard drive has been upgraded to an SSD. The built-in SD card reader clocked in at one minute and 50 seconds, and surely that's gonna be hard to beat because it is a pro. But get a look at this Lexar dual slot USB 3.0 card reader. With that bulk, surely it's got some go fast goodies in there. But no, it clocks in at two minutes and 15 seconds, and that's slower than the MacBook Pro. Now let's try this Lexar USB 3.0 adapter. I didn't have much hope for this. It came bundled with something, and it's kind of cheap, plasticky, and I kind of sat in a drawer for much of the time. 40 seconds. I ran that test again, and again, and again, 40 seconds. So the fastest way for me to transfer my files from my SD cards is actually on my cheapest device that I had relegated to a drawer. Here's the thing. I actually tend to copy my images over using a USB cable connecting the camera to my laptop. And I didn't necessarily think that it would be faster because you do have to open Apple's image capture program and select the images and drag them to a folder. But I did think it would be comparable. So the time here actually includes interfacing with Apple's image capture program and the actual transfer time. And it's slower, much slower, significantly slower. Still, I use this method a lot because I can plug in my camera and usually find something else to do. Now there is one caveat I encountered across all the methods. After a few gigabytes of data transfer, the rates would slow down. And I initially thought maybe it was a memory caching issue, but even smaller batches back to back would slow down. Sometimes double the speed of the previous test or triple the speed of the previous test. So then I decided to let the card cool down in between each test. And after cooling down, the speed shot right back up to the initial tests. And we were back in the fast lane. And there you have it. I confirmed a few things and I learned a few things. If you have any questions or suggestions, please drop those in the comments below. If you don't know who I am, I'm Matthew Fortner and I'm a photographer based in Charleston, South Carolina. You can follow me on Instagram at ByMatthewFortner. See you in the next one. Okay, all right. Take 1,000 and... This is much harder than it looks.